What's up, everybody, and welcome back to A Beer A Day with TK. It's Wednesday, so you know what that means, WTF Wednesday. For those of you who may be new to the program, WTF Wednesday is the one day a week when I showcase beers I normally wouldn't on the program. So sometimes this means I do stuff from the macros, Bud Miller Coors, and those folks. Sometimes I do stuff from microbreweries, but maybe a little bit off the beaten path. Uh, and sometimes I do stuff like this, Steel Reserve High Gravity. Um, this is from the Steel Reserve Brewing Company in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's a subsidiary of Molson Coors. And uh, I just heard that this beer is being discontinued. If you may have seen a lot of the, the I guess a lot of these economy line brews are being taken off the shelves. I guess as, as craft beer grows, maybe less people are interested in these. Maybe the folks that used to drink these are drinking seltzers now. I don't know what's going on, but they're pulling them. Um, so I figured it's time to give it a shot. I've had this a few times over the years. I think the first time I had it was at my dad's house in Florida, probably, I don't know, a long time ago, 10, 10 15 years ago. I remember seeing it in the fridge. I'd never heard of Steel Reserve, so I thought maybe it was a, a new, cool, fancy beer. Uh, I was wrong. It was indeed not. It's a high-gravity malt, uh, malt liquor type brew, so, you know, kind of is what it is. Whenever I see this, I'm, I don't know. I, I always kind of pass on it because I don't really want to drink it. But as it won't be around anymore, I figured it's finally time to break down and, and do a review. Um, it's kind of interesting. I, I'm trying to think back when the first time I saw this was like, I know I saw it at my dad's, but I can't place the year. When I looked on Wikipedia, it said this was out in the nineties. I don't really remember it in the nineties. I mean, I remember it in the two thousands, but I mean, you know, I guess if it says it was, it was, um, it said that the Reverend Horton heat and the Ramones were commissioned to do jingles for this back in the day, which I think is, is kind of strange and interesting. I guess that's back when you could advertise beer and have some fun, right? Um, you don't really see too many beer commercials on TV like you used to many years ago. Um, Steel Reserve is what it is. This is 8.1% ABV. I couldn't find anything on IBUs. I don't even think it really matters. Um, you know, this is what it is. This is something you drink. It's high ABV. It's pretty cheap and it'll get you mangled. Whenever I see this, I kind of think of the movie Jackie Brown and Samuel L. Jackson when he's talking about the AK-47. You know, the very best there is when you absolutely positively got to kill every MF -er in the room except no substitute. I think the same with this. If you absolutely positively want to get mangled on less than a buck fifty, except no substitute. Steel Reserve, the OG here, right? So let's give it a shot. Ratings wise, doesn't do well. Big surprise on Untapped. It was a 2.12. Beer Advocate 2.37, uh, with an aggr aggregate score of 57. Awful. Got this B creeping about me here again. Get out of here. Not even the B wants the steel reserve. What are you doing? This B is trying to get me. He's been out here all morning trying to get at me, man. All right. Let's check it out. A ton of carbonation in there. If we're looking at the chart here, the Brew HQ SRM chart, that's clear yellow, pale straw, maybe a two or a three at best. Ton of carbonation in there. Head, and actually has a pretty decent head. I got two fingers on this big Phillies glass. Um, white, it looks kind of frothy. It's doing the little breaking up in the islands thing. The, the carbonation's nuts. It's still going crazy there, which is quite interesting. Kind of reminds me, I think I saw this on the can. Extra malted barley and select hops for extra gravity. So extra gravity, right? Slow brewed for exceptionally smooth flavor. And they have this little blurb on the side. The 211 mark, based on the medieval symbol for steel, appears only on steel reserve high gravity lager. We use nearly twice the ingredients of many normal lagers and brew for over twice as long as many quality beers. So when I read that, it's kind of interesting. It's almost like they're acknowledging they're not a quality beer, right? So we brew it longer than those quality guys. That's got to be worth something. Let's see what it's like. Smell. Not great. It's just kind of sweet, adjuncty, like you kind of expect. Now, I will say this. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to smell. A lot of times, the like it's like a corn or rice sweetness or whatever it is, like that gross sweetness you get from adjunct seems to be really high. And I really don't like it. This one's not that bad. The smell. Well, let's go in and give this a shot. I can't believe the carbonation is still going berserk. Let's give it a shot. Cheers. Yeah. 
that's there. Um, sweet, probably not quite as sweet as I thought it would be. Um, it tastes a tiny bit syrupy. It's kind of like medium bodied. A bit syrupy. Um, has, has a fair amount of sweetness to it. Um, you you kind of get a little bit of a malt something there. Ooh, that's kind of gross. Uh, the aftertaste there, you kind of get a funky alcohol taste. It's not even like a burn like you would get from high ABV beer. I mean, this is 8.1. I know that's high for a lot of folks. I mean, I can drink Belgian beers that are 8, 9, 10%. And, you know, you know you're drinking a beer with a high ABV. Um, but they're at least a, a quality beer, so you don't mind it as much. This, on the other hand... I, it started out okay, kind of got sweeter and sweeter, kind of as I, I took the sip and let it linger. Um, and then you get this funky alcohol taste. And it, again, it's not that like astringency that I usually associate with alcohol or a burn that you associate with it. But it's kind of like that, that gross. I, I always said this with these, it's kind of like a stomach bile sweet kind of thing that I don't quite like and it kind of puts me off. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know, I'm not really digging that too much. Again, this is kind of an iconic beer. A lot of people have drank it over the years, and there's nothing wrong with that. I've been there myself. A lot of times you don't have a lot of money. You kind of get what you, you know, get what you can for a buck or two. Um, that being said, I think there are probably better options than this. I think this line is still going to exist with their flavored ones, but this one's uh, going to go the way of the Dodo. So, you know, is what it is. I don't really like it. Steel Reserve High Gravity would get a thumbs down. I wouldn't be drinking another one of these, but I am still glad that I got to give it a shot before um, they're taken off the shelves for good. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know what you guys are like. I kind of love Untapped and love the ability to just try different beers. You're going to like some, you're going to dislike some, but it's still, you know, the ability to just try them and say, well, I've had it. And at least you can give an inf informed opinion as opposed to saying, oh, it sucks. And you don't really know because you've never tried it. So is what it is. Hey, hopefully you like the video. If you do, please hit that thumbs up button. Give me a like. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit subscribe. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, jump in down below. Are you a Steel Reserve fan or are you sad this is going to be leaving the shelves? What do you think you'll be drinking instead now that this will be gone? Are you going to go to the flavored ones or are you going to try something different? Hey, let me know. Till next time. Cheers.